Knicks have a foul to give. 10.6 to go. Corey Joseph on a handoff for DeMar. Seven, six, five. DeRozan, four, three. Jump and good! DeRozan with one. I'm sure for the players it's a little unnerving uh, when you hear all the reports and the rumors that you might be traded, that your name is uh, out there. Uh, I thought it interesting that on trade deadline day, Patrick Patterson was asked if he feels okay, and he said, what time is it? I even go back to how many years ago when Juan Dixon got traded, and I believe that was the, the Primo Brezic deal, and that happened on a day when the Raptors were leaving town. So um, guys on the team, they had just, you know, I believe gone through a workout and a practice with Juan, and all of a sudden you get to the airport and Juan Dixon doesn't show up and he's not on the plane, and the guys are finding out on the airplane before the Raptors were taking off that one of their teammates had just been dealt. So I think it's real anxious, and it's kind of different as well when you, you kind of the, go through the... Um, the differences between being on the road and being in your hotel and being at practice and then not knowing if you're going back to, to check out and move on somewhere else or if you're at home and kind of in the comforts of your home and just waiting for that, that phone to ring or not. So I think it's definitely anxious and, and there's a, probably a little bit of uh, that sort of at ease feeling when the deadline finally passes and you know that you're safe in a sense for now. There's a lot leading up to it and, and it's, it's not the big moves. It's not the major moves, it's the small moves, it's the little tweaks, it's the acquisition of a Lou Williams by Houston for a little added scoring. Uh, it's, it's, you know, OKC grabbing Taj Gibson, who's a, a tough defender and rebound. It's, it's the little things, it's, you're accessorizing now, the house has been built. You need, you need drapes, you need window coverings, you need carpeting, you need those things that are gonna augment and help you out. And that's, to me, that's what trade deadline day is all about. There weren't too many people here. I think Serge Ibaka was in the weight room. You, I'm pretty, pretty confident he knew he was going anywhere. I think the vibe was probably pretty good in the sense that it was maybe less than an hour, 45 minutes or so roughly, when we in the media had finished talking to uh, Dwayne Casey and Patrick Patterson and we were doing the head count and all 13 were accounted for with uh, DeRozan and Lowry uh, dismissed for various reasons. So you kind of felt like, ah, oh, you got less than an hour until the deadline, everybody's here. There's Jared Sollinger over at the, at, the, at the far bucket shooting free throws with Patterson and Corey Joseph and you weren't really thinking a whole lot. And I was watching Masai in here and he was pacing back and forth on the phone and then Jeff Weltman came out and he was on the phone and, and you never think that anything's going to happen until it actually happens because those kinds of calls are made all the time and you never know how long they've been working on this deal, what, what kind of legwork has gone into it. Lucas Naguera walking off the floor literally about four minutes before the deadline. Uh, and Masai Ujiri was on the phone and Nagara kind of looked up at the clock and said, it's three o'clock, right? I said, yes, yeah, you got four more minutes. And I joked, you might want to check in with the boss. The writers are in the back room at the BioSteel Center uh, writing up their, uh, their story. I'm sure some of them have written that, you know, the Raptors won't do anything and they're waiting to submit that. And all of a sudden, 10 minutes before three o'clock, uh, you know, it's like a test. People are rubbing out their papers, pencils, rubbing out answers and changing them. I think there was probably an easy feeling around here, like maybe the team's done, and all of a sudden, boom. Raptors did make a move on trade deadline day, getting P.J. Tucker back, a player they drafted in the second round in 2006. Josh, do we like what the Raptors gave up to get Tucker? Well, they have to feel pretty good about being able to get him without giving up that first round pick that Phoenix wanted, that they were asking for, being able to get him for Sullinger's expiring contract, as well as two future second round picks, uh, I think is a win. Oh, done. 
Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know, so. For what? Yes. Um, yeah, a couple picks. Yeah, second round pick. Cool. Casey here? Yeah. PJ Tucker. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Tell Jonas he's still a raptor. He's still a raptor. What's that? Thank you. <laughs> now we're really, we're really, really like excited to excited to have you. Um, we we've been wanting we've been wanting to get you for a while here, and and um, um, I, I know um, you're gonna bring us toughness. You're gonna bring us everything that uh, we need on this team, but. I need you to come here and be the, the, a great leader, man. We need that on our team, you know. We need toughness. We need leadership. Uh, just winning attitude, man, you know. Where, wherever it is, in the locker room, with the guys, um, your spirit, everything. This is, this is our chance, man, because we, uh, I'm telling you, you know, like, yeah, the guy that I wanted to bring to this team because I've watched you. You can ask your agent, you know, we've... we've We've talked about this. It's it's so important, so so important uh, for us. So um, get here focused, man. This is a few games of, and this is yeah. This is not just now, you know. Like obviously, we'll talk about a uh, uh, future, but prepare your mind, man. When as you are coming here, that this is 25 games of hell and playoffs of hell too. You know, like um, well, we want to win here, and I know you want to win. I mean, I thought it was crazy because, uh, I mean, we're all in the locker room, me, DeLon, Sully, Jakob, Pascal, JV, talking about it, you know, countdown, like waiting to see um, what moves are going to be made, like if somebody here is going to get traded. And, um, you know, we thought everything was good because um, on TV, the trade deadline ticker, you know, went away. And Sully was like, all right, like, I'm good because his name's been cycling about trading. So he thought he was OK. And then. You know, literally like a minute and a half later, he gets a text from his agent that uh, the trade with P.J. Tucker went through and that he's going to, to be a son. So, I mean, it was crazy. And he got the call from his side. But, you know, I'm really excited for him. You know, I know he's excited and happy. You know, maybe he get a, a better opportunity than he got here, you know, getting his injury, you know, having to work his way back and um, trying to find playing time um, due to his injury. So, um, hopefully... Second half of the season with the Suns, he'll be able to play more and show what he can do. So I'm really excited for Sully and, you know, another addition to our team, uh, to our lineup. You know, P.J. Tucker's a 3 and D guy, really physical uh, defender, can play both positions, multiple positions at that and knock down three. So it's going to be an added addition for us to be more versatile on the offensive end. Uh, well, I, pre I appreciate it. I can't wait to see you here, man. Travel safe, you know, like, and uh, say hi to your family. We, we really appreciate it. Uh, uh, everything and uh, we can't wait to have you as a Raptor, man. Okay. All right, man. Thank you. Come on. Done. Thanks, Emilio. Mm -hmm. Thank you, <laughs> When I saw that drumming in my face together, I was like, please no. Hey. P.J. Tucker, by the way, drafted by Toronto in 2006. The former Big 12 player of the year at Texas has traveled around the world pursuing his dream. He was in the D-League. He played in Israel, Greece, Puerto Rico. You have more nuggets than anybody I know, Eric. Kept alive by the act of Tucker. Gets it to go, plus the five. P.J. Tucker having quite a night. He's got that look of determination and ferocity on his face. Yeah, Tucker's one of those defensive players who takes it personal. He's gonna give you everything he has every single night. Ready, bro? Let's do it.
The last 24 hours have been probably the craziest 24 hours uh, in a long time. Uh, from finding out uh, at one o'clock, right when I'm actually in the shower, like my teammates come and tell me I got traded, to literally having to pack everything up and get here as soon as possible. Uh, and having a toothache and not being able to sleep on the planes. So I've been like wired and going like all night, all day. So uh, it's been a crazy 24 hours, but it's been a, it's been a, it's been a good 24 hours. It's like you get traded, you get- I have no idea. It's I like, can only imagine. I like, in a, I like over 300 messages in an hour. It's no. like crazy, it was like crazy. It's like, I'm not, I'm not gonna reply back to all this. Like, I'm not replying to all this, it's ridiculous. I know, right? You don't think so until <laughs> you get traded. Get traded, oh, man. You don't know more people than that. I'm a guy that, uh, you know, once I get a goal and I got my eyes set on something, uh, you know, I give 120% and full blast. So uh, you know, that's what he wants. Uh, you know, my energy, my effort, my, my leadership. And, uh, you know, that's what we'll get. Uh, whatever the team needs. I think uh, teams uh, as good as this one with so many good guys, uh, in this position that it'll be different things, different nights. I think uh, when you're in this position, you try to do whatever it takes to get wins. So one night it may be one thing, but the next night it may be another. So, you know, I'm a utility guy. I go out and whatever job needs to be done that night, I just try to do it. I've always been a big admirer of him from when he was here the first time. Uh, he's a tough, hard-nosed guy. Uh, this team needed some toughness and grit, a little sandpaper. Well, the first time he was in Toronto, he just wasn't acclimated to the NBA game. Sam Mitchell loved him, called him his baby mule for his strength, his, his toughness, uh, his attitude, his willingness to play hard. And now he goes to Europe, works on a three-point shot that will keep him on the floor. He still maintains all the other things, so don't, don't, don't sleep on that. And this is, it is probably the most versatile lineup or pieces, number of pieces that, that this city has ever seen with this team. You want a guy that uh, can come off the bench, uh, guard a few different positions, uh, you know, really compete, uh, rebound the ball, defend, and he'll make winning plays. And I think when you look in the playoffs, a lot of times, it's not necessarily your stars. It's it's the it's the other guys that kind of the defining plays that they make, uh, and their willingness to you know raise their level of competitive spirit. I think it's gonna be interesting for guys to play against him in practice. And I think toughness is infectious. I think if he takes the best player on the other team out of the game with his toughness, it makes everybody around him a little bit more bold. And I think that's the trickle-down effect when he's on the floor. And you add him and Serge Ibaka to this club, and now suddenly you, you have a different dynamic in play where your team can be a, a lot more efficient, effective defensively. Uh, these are guys that are professional offensive players. They know how to play. They know what it takes to win at the pro level. Well, I, I think they, they address the two crying needs that everybody saw, a power forward, a veteran, and, and some size and strength on the wing. And, at a very little cost. You know, I think it, it's a it's a clear signal to Casey. Here you go. You want to, you want to coach tough players? Here's some tough players. And I think it's a message to the players that said we need help. Okay, here's your help. It's on their lap now. They got to perform in these last 25 games. And you think about not only PJ Tucker, you think about Serge Ibaka. Played the last half season in Orlando. Go to a game in Orlando. Nobody cares. Go to a game in Phoenix. Nobody cares. Those franchises aren't going anywhere. So right now, you just suddenly have gotten thrown into a playoff race with a team that was in the East Finals last year. You're going to be in the rotation, both of these guys. And you got an, a crazy fan base in Toronto that, you know, you'll be a national hero if you can do some things uh, to keep pushing this thing along. Hey, 25 left, man. Let's treat every single one like it's our last. We can have no mistakes. Every possession counts, man. 48 minutes. Let's get this win. Win on three. One, two, three. What? The wait is over. He's been a Raptor for 10 days. Serge Ibaka will make his debut tonight at the Air Canada Centre. P.J. Tucker, who went almost coast to coast in 24 hours, he will play tonight as well. The hottest player in the NBA, Isaiah Thomas, and the Celtics in town. But then the bigger news came just about an hour ago when the Raptors revealed that Kyle Lowry will not play 
It's a wrist injury he originally sustained against Charlotte, re-aggravated at the All-Star game. The Raptors had that second seed locked down, or so it seemed, for the longest time. And then, you know, they go through a bit of a funk, and suddenly now you're, you're dropping down to third, fourth, and, and eyeing potentially falling to fifth or sixth. So uh, I think it means a little bit more, and, and maybe it sends a message to, to Boston as well that, hey, you guys have been on a hot streak, but the season's not over. So we can still make a run, and we still believe we're at least the second best, if not aspiring to be even higher. Ibaka runs the floor, the jumper, and it's good. He gets the denial in the friendly roll, and the crowd erupts. Great defense. Rozier fought down to five. Tucker all over the map. How collision. How grabs in. Isaiah Thomas there. Timeout taken by Toronto. All created by P.J. Tucker. Five will take it, take it away by Tucker, and you got to love what he provides. Oh, yeah. Nabaka, Joseph, swings it, Carroll the bread, got it from Shelburne. DeRozan, five seconds, jumper, good! With a hand in the face, DeRozan, 40. 99-94. Thomas. Ibaka hedging. Smart with the three. Doesn't go. Tucker with the ninth rebound. And he's fouled. And P.J. Tucker saying, yeah. Yeah. You love me, T.O. Because this is what I do. I work. Serge Ibaka. His debut as a Raptor, 15.7 rebounds. And the two new additions do exactly what you want from them, what's expected of them, and what they expect from themselves, as well as the rest of their teammates. And DeMar DeRozan with a career-best 43 points. Hey, sir, good job, man. CJ, hope you start. We need the win, bro. We need this. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know. And one do not come back. I'll tell you right now. And that's the way the battle. We were down 17 points, and you guys stayed together and fought through everything. That's the way the scrap. We said it at halftime, it's going to be a grinded out game. And you guys grinded it out. That last group in there, BJ, all those guys in there at the end, you grinded it out. All right? They knew they were in for a dog fight, but again, that's one of 25 left. Now we got 24 more to go. I hate to be a party pooper. What is it, JB? Let's enjoy this to midnight. All right, and then we gotta get ready for Portland. to you. That's Turn right. the camera off. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. Turn it off. Now we gotta get ready for Portland. Let's keep this grind. Let's keep this edge, that chip on our shoulder, because nobody gives us a snowballing chance in hell, man. And we got enough in this room, this room, to get up there. All right, all we gotta do is stay together. Stay together, stay committed to the defensive end. They shot 42%. We held them down, and we grinded it out. That's a great job. All right, <coughs> each side is going to be somebody different. All right, maybe the Lions night one night. Maybe Norm's night one night. Maybe Yaka's night. All right, everybody's got to stay ready and committed and locked in. Here we go. Together. <laughs> It's really just getting into habits, like trying to do the same stuff before every game it becomes part of your game routine. And I think it's important to get in your game mindset, even like when you go back to the hotel or like right before the game in the locker room, like to have stuff that gets you game ready. 43 of the fourth for my dad. 
and my three brothers and three is for my mom and my two sisters. Um, so usually before they, like I, I hit number four four times and I hit number three three times, you know, kind of like rub it three times, do the sign of the cross and then point in the sky for my dad. Me and uh, Pat have our little uh, four-shot uh, competition in layup lines, and JV getting the lob off the backboard before uh, the starting lineups announced. I think it's really good, you know, it's a little fun, get us going, get us, you know, not as stressed out about the game, you know, free-flowing and, you know, loose and, uh, you know, just ready to compete. I, I like the rituals that we have, you know, uh, I think it's fun for the fans to see and for us to do, you know, it shows our togetherness and our, our team chemistry. Today's going to be a tough one against Portland for sure, but I mean, again, wins and losses right now, not not the biggest thing. I mean, get this team together, figure out who likes what, where they want, where they want the ball, how they fit, and then go from there. I mean, it just be strong at the end. That's what I'm saying. I think this week's going to be very big um, in the respect that every game from here on out is going to be very important um, between. Uh, the second place team on through the eighth, um, there's only a differential of, uh, you know, two or three games in the loss column. So every game now is uh, a playoff game for us to jockey for position uh, for the playoffs. You made a trade, you made a deal, you don't know what's going on with Kyle. You're not going to go undefeated, right? That's not going to happen. So it's really important to just play the game the right way. Here's Serge with the three-pointer. Got it! Serge Ibaka delivers from the Sioux. Corey, entry pass. Go again. Serge Ibaka backing in, backing in. Little shake shimmy. Oh, what? They move by Serge Ibaka. That had a little bit of keen to it, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. That's he old school scored. basketball right there. The guy's got to go and just keep giving it to him. DeMar spins around. Elbow. Got it. And DeMar DeRozan with 30. Daddy, he just made that look just ridiculously easy. And that's going to do it. Toronto. They've won three consecutive. And after the All-Star break, they're 2-0 and with Serge Ibaka and P.J. Tucker. And he went at 112-106. Knicks have a foul to give. 10.6 to go. Corey Joseph on a handoff for DeMar. Seven, six, five. DeRozan, four, three, jump and good! DeRozan with 1.9 to go. Knocks down the jumper. The kid from Compton. Living large in New York City. 92-91. Kyle Lowry tomorrow morning will have surgery here in New York on his right wrist. Unfortunate for the Toronto Raptors, certainly. But in talking to Andy Miller, his agent, they want to get him all set to go prior to the end of the regular season so they can certainly make a big playoff push. This is an opportunity for the Raptors collectively to become a better team. Obviously, you're going to miss Kyle Lowry. You can't replace him. He's a fabulous player. We all know that. That's fact. But that doesn't mean that the Raptors here in the next six weeks can't develop into a stronger and they have to become a better defensive team and they've got to become sounder in terms of late game execution and I think having other guys now have to lift a little bit more weight maybe that helps.